What's up guys, in this video we're going to talk about agmatine sulfate. Um, agmatine sulfate is a metabolite of L-arginine, or arginine I think it's called, and it's got a lot of really cool effects and we're gonna talk about it right now. So before we get into that, I'm not a doctor, this is not medical advice, I'm not allowed to give you medical advice legally, even though, you know, maybe I know a lot about this stuff, I'm not allowed to do that, so this is not medical advice, take any of these things at your own risk. Um, also, in the description of this video, there is a link for you to purchase Agmatine, among other things, to a website that I am affiliated with. And if you do make a purchase, I will get a commission from that. So full disclosure in that regard. Third thing, you don't actually need to take any supplements at all. All you need is food, water, sleep, and exercise, I guess. Um, however, I believe that taking supplements is a great way to improve the efficacy of everything that you do. Um, and Agmatine specifically is a supplement that I currently take and I have been taking for a very long time and I actually do recommend this one. So um, this is one that I actually have a lot of experience with and I wanted to make this video about it because I think it's a great substance and it's one of those things that I don't wanna say I couldn't live without it, but I notice a, a very good benefit from it and the cost to benefit ratio is, is very small. So. It's, it's worth it, I guess, is, is my way of saying that. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about it and then we're going to talk about my personal experience with it. So um, agmatine, like I said, is a metabolite of L-arginine, which is an amino acid. Uh, back in the day, arginine was a supplement that people would take for pumps in the gym. Uh, pumps as a way of like boosting nitric oxide in the blood which is responsible for the pumps, right? People will take NO boosters now or NO2 boosters now um, as a way to get a, a pump in the gym. And it also had some sort of like, um, it was like, it was used as like a uh, sexual aid, right? To help you like get a stronger boner basically because you, you know, all the, it, it improves blood flow to certain areas of your body. I think it's called a, it's a vasodilator, I want to say, which means, you know, vaso is veins. Dilator means to expand. Uh, it says it's derived through arginine through decarboxylation, the removal of a carboxylic acid group uh, it's stored in neurons and is released during neuronal activation. It's considered a neurotransmitter and a neuromodulator. Preliminary research suggests agmatine has potential use in the treatment of neuropathic pain and drug addiction. It also protects the brain from toxins and strokes. So if you know anybody who, um, and again, this is not medical advice, blah, blah, blah. This is all based on this article and you know the science behind it. Um, but there does seem to be some evidence that it protects from strokes. And um, I know a lot of people will take it as a way to um, come off of Phenibut or Kratom. Uh, I, I believe they either use it to come off of those two drugs or as a way to kind of uh, increase their effectiveness. Don't quote me on that, although I, I do know that they are used in dosages of around two, uh, two grams, um, which is a fairly, I don't wanna say it's a high dose, but it's like above average. Agritine has several meth mechanisms. It can inhibit N-methyl D-aspartate, NMDA, and nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, as well as activate imidazoline imid, receptors. I'm not sure what those are. Agmatine can also inhibit nitric oxide, nitric oxide synthase enzymes, which allows it to regulate elevated levels of nitric oxide. So like what I said earlier, if you are inhibiting an enzyme that metabolizes nitric oxide, then by default, you'll have more nitric oxide circulating in your blood. And nitric oxide, like I said earlier, is responsible for pumps and increased blood flow, which is generally like a good thing in the bodybuilding community or the fitness community, really. Um, Agmatine can inhibit calcium channels and certain serotonin receptors as well. There is a lot of animal evidence to suggest Agmatine is highly promising, is a highly promising research chemical. It is not a common supplement because there is a lack of human evidence for its effects, which just means there is a lack of organized studies on its effects that prove or disprove what they actually think it does. Does not mean that there is a lack of effects. Just wanna clarify that. Several studies have been done on people, but the majority use agmatine injections, not oral inject ingestion. Research must establish that agmatine's effects will work following oral ingestion in order for wide-scale supplementation to be considered. So basically, 
there are studies, but they, they, um, the study, the like injection of agmatine for some reason, instead of just taking it as a powder, I'm not really sure why, probably because it's a more efficient delivery method and probably because it's thought to be used in a more, uh, therapeutic sense, not therapeutic, um, like in a hospital by doctors, right? Where they can inject things easily. Your average person's not going to inject anything. Um, so that, that seems to be what it is. How to take agmatine. There are no standard dosages for agmatine because of the lack of human evidence for its effects. However, a single human study used 1.3 to 2.6 grams of agmatine daily for the treatment of neuropathic pain. The estimated human dose for improving cognition is 1.6 to 6.4 milligrams per kilogram of agmatine taken orally. So let's just break those down one by one. Um, agmatine is recommended for neuropathic pain, which neuropathic pain is basically nerve pain, right? Like, for example, if you break your arm, you're experiencing pain from the broken bone. This is my bro science explanation. Don't quote me on this, but you're experiencing pain from the broken bone itself. When you experience nerve pain, um, it's more like, let's say you have a joint replaced, uh, you will experience nerve pain, even though the actual like damage to your body is not particularly strong, or maybe it's just actually damage from nerves. Not really sure about that. Don't quote me on that, but it, they say specifically neuropathic pain as opposed to you know, what's the what's the other type of pain that you could experience? I guess pain neuropathic pain is pain in your mind. Let's look this up really quick. Neuropathic pain. Neuropathic pain is pain caused by damage or disease affecting the somatosensory nervous system. Neuropathic pain may be associated with abnormal sensations called dysesthesia or pain from normally non-painful stimuli. Interesting. Okay, so it seems to be like somatosensory nervous system as opposed to your central nervous system. I'm not really sure to be honest with you, but it's taken for neuropathic pain, I guess. Anyway, the next thing that they said, the estimated human dose for improving cognition is 1.6 to 6.4 milligrams per kilogram. That's a wide range. So first of all, let me tell you, I take 500 milligrams of agmatine per day for the like physiological benefits of exercise, for the pumps, basically. This is recommending 1.3. This is re recommending basically three to five times that dose for neuropathic pain. I've never taken that much. The most I've ever taken is a gram. It's very safe to take. It's a metabolite of an amino acid. So like, it's not, you know, if, if you take arginine, you're going to have agmatine in your body anyway. So it's not like, it's not like, oh my God, it's so much. How could they take that much? It's so dangerous. No. Um, so the, so that's, that's a higher dose than what I take, but I, I have taken a gram. I feel totally fine. I could take more, no problem. For improving cognition, it's between 1.6 to 6.4 milligrams per kilogram. So if I weigh 80 kilograms, 80 times 1.5 would be 120 milligrams. That's a lower dose than what I'm taking. 6.5 times 80 would be about 500 milligrams, which is what I'm taking. Now, regarding the like cognition boost, I don't know if I've experienced a cognition boost per se, although I have noticed a bit of a like calming effect from taking agmatine. Now, bro science right here. Because agmatine is a neurotransmitter and is I don't know if it's a vasodilator per se, but it does help regulate nitric oxide, which is a vasodilator, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. So it kind of indirectly is a vasodilator, I guess you could say. Um, it is said to increase the effectiveness of other medications that you take because when you improve circulation, which is what a vasodilator does, you're improving the rate at which substances circulate in your bloodstream. So that's also something to keep in mind. Basically, it'll make other things that you are taking more effective. So they say. Um, all right, so these dosages, by the way, are, are based off of the conversion dose from rats to humans, which is this like complicated dosing. You know, when they do a study on rats, they wanna like extrapolate that dose to humans, but it's a complicated like equation that you have to do. So that's what those doses are based on. And it says supplementation should not exceed 6.4 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, which is around um, 500 milligrams. So like, I don't know. I, I think it's very safe. Again, this is not medical advice. I'm not a doctor. I think you can safely take more than that. I've never tried taking more than a gram a day, 
because it's just it's effective at that dose and i just haven't thought to, to try more um but i i believe that it is safe to take more don't quote me on that all right so let's look at the level of evidence here now there's only two things that it was studied for here and i'm not sure if this is one study or two studies i believe this these were two studies uh, the first thing is a notable reduction in pain so it says here in the trial on lumbar disc associated radiculopathy radiculopathy the degree of pain alleviation was fairly notable relative to placebo and persisted for two months after supplementation was ceased no reference drug comparisons unfortunately so like a lot of times what they'll do is they'll compare um you see this a lot with like herbal supplements or like you'll, they'll compare like a drug to like an herbal supplement or a drug to like whatever some like th um homeopathic therapy or something to see like is this drug really that good and can you avoid taking the drug which a lot of the times has like bad side effects and just take some herb instead so in in this case it does not seem that they actually they didn't compare it to any drugs they just I, i'm not sure i haven't read the study but it seems like they either they probably had like a control group that took placebo and a, yeah it says right here relative to placebo and another group that took agmatine and um, the group that took agmatine experienced a notable reduction in pain that persisted for two months afterwards. So that seems to be fairly like conclusive, even though it was only one study. The next outcome that they measured for was depression. And there is a very strong reduction in depression. Very strong, it was only one study. It says agmatine was responsible for, uh, okay, so one very preliminary study exists, but remission was achieved in all three subjects with two to three grams of agmatine. So depression is kind of tricky because on the one hand, you know, again, I'm not a doctor, but like there are some physiological things that happen to your body when you are diagnosed with depression, let's say. You have low energy and you feel sad and like that means certain you know chemicals in your brain are more present or less present but a lot of those things can be changed with certain activities right for example you're depressed you have depressed brain chemicals and you go to the gym and you exercise for a week well your brain chemistry is going to change right so like the reason i say this is because if remission was achieved which i'm assuming means that these people like stopped being depressed when they were taking agmatine and then when they stopped taking it they like went back to being depressed well that arguably has a lot to do with their lifestyle and their habits and all of the external forces around them that are affecting their their choices from day to day so like modern medicine or science has this idea that like you should be able to take one thing and it should magically like cure all of your problems and change everything for you regardless of your lifestyle choices which i think is a mistake um you know what i mean so like there's that uh, but if if there was a strong like if it, if it worked at all if people noticed anything at all then they can use that to kickstart uh, the implementation of healthy habits in their life which is the real key I would argue to like managing depressive symptoms okay so that's basically it and like I said in my in my experience agmatine is, is great for pumps and it helps like mellow me out a little bit very subtle like mellowing effect and it's very cheap also so like keep that in mind as well um, that's basically it for agmatine this is actually one of those supplements that i take currently and i recommend it if you are interested in trying it yourself there's a link in the description where you can buy it i do make a commission if you buy that there and if you use coupon code YALAPOPPY10, you will get a 10% uh, discount on that. So that's it. If you guys have any other recommendations for supplements, nootropics, whatever, any, any sort of supplement or something like that that you want me to talk about, let me know. Leave me a comment. Peace.